This is a floor plan. Master plan. This is a floor plan. Is a master plan. How do you read that? Do you plan on buying a house or renovating your home? You are going to need to be able to understand floor plans. It is a key skill that I think everybody should. For context: I'm a part one architectural assistant. I've been reading and drawing up floor plans both academically and also in professional practice for the last five years now. In this video, we'll cover line weights, scale bars, dimensions, and how to read plans. I'm gonna show you the examples through these two floor plans that I have created and I have used when on site. They are small residential properties, which is good just to get a basic understanding of how to read floor plans. Number one. Line weight. In floor plans, different line weights are used to represent different elements. The thicker, heavier line weights tend to represent harder elements, such as walls and floors. The thinner elements tend to represent smaller elements, such as stud walls, partitions, or smaller openings. Thick lines, thinner lines. In this floor plan, you can see that the furniture is shown in the lightest line weight, and the walls are represented in the heaviest line weight. The variation of line weights create hierarchy in the drawing and demonstrate relationships between elements. To scale. The house that I'm in right now is one-to-one -one scale. If I was to draw this house in floor plan, I would have to shrink it down a lot. And I would draw it to probably about one to 100 scale. The scale helps you draw different pieces of architecture to different sizes so that you can fit it on pieces of A4, A3 or A2. Make sure to check the scale bar to make sure that you are measuring your drawings correctly. Take a look at this scale bar on the floor plan. It might indicate that one millimeter on the paper represents one meter in reality. By referring to the scale bar, we can determine the size and proportions of different rooms and features. It looks like the guest room spaces on this floor plan are equivalent to about five millimeters on paper. So in real life, you can imagine that the lengths of these rooms are about five meters. So one to 20 scale just means that the drawing is 20 times smaller than the real life version. By returning to the scale bar, we can determine the size and proportions of different rooms, spaces and furniture. But let's talk dimensions. So on this measuring tape, you've got centimetres on the bottom and then you've got feet on the top. A lot of measurements in the UK are actually in millimetres. So the equivalent of the 40 below would equate to 400 millimetres. 40 centimetres is the same as 400 millimetres. Dimensions are essential to understand the sizes of different things in a floor plan. They're typically represented with arrows, numbers or different points just to identify the lengths, the heights and the widths of different spaces. They can also tell us the sizes of doors, windows, arches, openings, radiators. I'm just highlighting some of the important dims, such as the door being 860 mil, then the distance between the door and the window being 760 mil. The width of the window is 2100 mil or 2.1 meters. So the length of the room is four meters. The width of the room is 2.5 meters. While it says, on the existing drawings that we printed that it was 3.9 when we went there we realized that it's actually a little bit bigger so it's always good just to double check your dimensions in person door size is 760 you can see here we've got the stairs and we've made a note of the width and the depth of the stairs we've made a note of the window sizes it shows us the names of the different spaces and the sizes it's time to examine the overall layout of the space. Look for walls that are represented by thick lines. These walls define the room or rooms and create a structure for the floor plan. Now, let's consider the flow and connectivity of spaces because most spaces, buildings and houses are designed to inhabit people, movement and action. Look for doorways represented by open rectangles and windows, typically shown as open spaces with lines or triangles running through. Opening for a door, opening for a window. Opening for a door and window, it's a sliding door. In this floor plan, when you're thinking about the flow and the circulation of the space, 
you are able to read that you enter through here into the ground floor bathroom. You can then head up the stairs through here. You open through the large opening archway and you come round into the kitchen area, which is labelled. You then flow through the open plan living room space. You can have a seat or you can also head out into the back garden. So there's a direct flow from the front of the property right to the back of the property. So this side is the ground floor and this side is the upper floor. And if I put it flat and zoom in, you can see that in the primary bedroom space, we've actually got one main window into the room and then we've also got another window into the bathroom. So this is where we are gonna get the main sunlight into the bedroom from this side and in the bathroom, it is gonna be on this side. When we're talking about flow, in this drawing, we would understand that you enter through this door here and then you would maybe have the bedroom on this side here as a little square to represent it and it looks out over the window. So you flow in through here and you flow out through here. On the ground floor, you flow in through the foyer entrance into the hallway and then through this door, you enter the living room. From the living room, there is an opening at the very back where you would flow into the kitchen area. And from the kitchen area, you would flow around the worktop spaces, preparing food. And then there is actually a door opening and it even says entry here. That's the entry space. And it allows you to then flow into the patio area that is labeled at the very back. So it's all about understanding the flow. So once you've been able to read and understand floor plans, you can then begin to interpret elevations, sections and details. So on this sheet, while it is very messy, it does give you an understanding of a drawing pack. So on this side here, you have the title block with most of the information. And then on the rest of the sheet, you can see we've got a ground floor plan and a first floor plan. And then we've got elevations showing the building. Floor plans, Once elevation. you've understood the basics of how to read floor plans, maybe you can have a go at drawing some up. Draw your house, draw your bedroom, draw your kitchen, include the sizes of furniture, and you'll become more confident when it comes to reading and assessing. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this content useful. If you like this video, make sure you subscribe down below. Stay blessed. See you guys in my next video.